Jennifer from Sea Lemon. I have a slight addiction to patterned paper and when I saw this Mystic Moon Halloween paper pack at Michael's, I really wanted to make some book covers out of it. So I'm going to show you how I made a couple of them in this video. The size of this paper was a little bit small for a full book cover, which led me to trying some book guard or book repair tape. I've heard of this stuff before, but I've never actually used it. It works well for repairing books, but it also works well for joining two covers together on the spine. And I know you guys have been asking for more binding methods on this channel, so in this video I will show you a new binding method called a sewn chain stitch. I'll give you all the measurements I used on my books, but you can of course adjust those to make your own version of the book, and I will put all of the supplies I use and links in the video description below, and let's get into it! For the pages, I'm using 10 sheets of letter size paper in this cream color, and folding each sheet in half on the long side. Then I'm cutting each of those folded sheets in half. And this will make my final page size four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Now I have 20 folded sheets and I'm going to stack all of those centered. So one folded sheet on top of the other. Pages stacked like this will form a shape like this on the edge and you can leave it if you'd like, but I'm going to trim this smooth. So I'm stacking the group all together so the pages are even and trimming the edge with a sharp blade and slow and steady as that will be the smoothest outcome. If you do find the edge is a little uneven or rough, you can take a piece of sandpaper or a nail file to smooth it out. Now onto the cover, I'm trimming this out of two millimeter thick board. And here is my cover size based on the pages. And I trimmed out two of these to make the front and back cover. In case you're using different measurements for your covers, just know that I factored in an eighth of an inch hang around the board, and then also a fourth of an inch on the side of the spine for the hinge. Now we can glue on the Mystic patterned paper. And in case you want to make your own with some skull motif or pattern, I do have a couple of skull related videos on my channel. You can check out these for inspiration, I will also link these down below. I'm using an extra strength glue stick to glue the cover to the paper, and I'm doing this because I like that it dries fast and it doesn't have a lot of moisture in it to warp the paper. And just in case you're curious on why I use the glues that I do for bookbinding, I made a whole video about it. You can check that out up here. Now I'm going to trim the side flaps to about an inch. But since this side will be covered with book tape, I actually don't need a flap for this, so I'm just going to trim this side flush to the board. Now I'm going to trim off an angle on the outside of the corners, and I'm going to leave maybe about like three millimeters away from the corner so that that area can fold over the corner of the board. And now glue those flaps over. And I find that it makes a smooth edge if I bend over the paper like this and then smooth it over. And I like to tap the corners like this just to make a more finished edge. Now for the inside cover, I'm trimming out this patterned paper of eyes, gluing it to the board, but making sure that the side that is going toward the spine is flush with that same side on the cover. That flushed edge will be covered with book tape, and then that should leave your inside paper with about 3 eighths of an inch border. Then I put a heavy weight on top of the cover so it dries flat. I repeated all of those steps to make the back cover, and now I'm going to use the book guard tape to make the spine. Here's the space I left in between the front and back cover, so I'm going to center that tape on top of this space. You want to do this on a surface that's easy to remove tape, like a cutting mat. And to make sure the covers stay in place, I secured them to the cutting mat with removable tape. 
I also used it as a guide measuring out two inches from the center of the spine so I have some sort of guide when I'm laying the book guard tape and it will be exactly centered. Now I'm laying down the book guard tape within that guide and making sure to pull out enough tape so that I have enough to wrap around to the inside of the covers. And I recommend cutting it off evenly, otherwise if you tear it off, it does leave a frayed white edge. Make sure it's pressed to the covers and then remove all of the removable tape. Carefully flip the whole thing over and fold over and press the extra pieces to the inside. And do this carefully to prevent any air bubbles. Press it down and smooth it out with a bone folder to define the hinges and edges of the spine. And now we can move on to making the binding holes. I used an extra piece of paper to be a template and I made all of the binding holes a half inch apart. Because this is a lot to pierce through, I divided it into two sections. And used an awl to pierce through the pages. Doing this on one half and then on the other. And then I stacked the pages back together. And I used that same template to mark the holes on the cover. Making sure to center it in the middle of the spine, and I marked it with a white pen because I found it easier to see. And used an awl to pierce through those marks. Making sure to do this carefully because if you do it too forceful, it will tear through the tape. And now we can finally bind. I'm grabbing my thread box, which I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but here's how I organize all my bookbinding thread. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but here is how I'm organized right now. So I color coordinate all of the threads using rings to hold them together, and I'm going to go with purple for this one. This binding doesn't require a lot of thread, so I estimated loosely about two feet. And waxed it with beeswax because the thread will be on the outside of the book and this will protect the thread from fraying and make it easier to work with. Single thread a binding or embroidery needle and start from the inside of the first binding hole. And I find it easy to use the tabletop as leverage. Enter that through the inside of the cover and onto the outside of that same binding hole. Pull the thread until you have a little bit left on the inside. And return that needle through the same hole back to the inside. Again, I like to use the tabletop as leverage. Continue to pull the thread, leaving a little loop on the outside. And continue to the next binding hole from the inside to the outside of the cover. making sure to leave that little loop of thread. Now pull the thread through that loop, and return the needle back through that same hole. And you can now tie off that extra end of thread in a knot. I did a double knot just to be extra secure. Tuck it under the other thread just to keep it neat in the inside of the pages and cut off any excess. Return the needle back to the outside on the next binding hole and then you're going to loop under that previous chain stitch. And return the needle back through that same hole. So now you can see the chains are linking. And from here, it's the same steps. Return the needle back to the outside, loop underneath that previous chain stitch, and back to the inside of the pages so you can continue doing that all the way down through all of the binding holes. When you reach the last one, you can continue looping under the previous stitch and return the needle back to the inside, and tie off the thread in a knot.
pull the thread underneath on the inside to keep it all neat and trim off any excess. The book kind of springs open so you can add a closure to it or tie a rubber band around it and leave it or put a heavy weight on top of it. Either one of those, do it overnight and then your pages will kind of form into their new shape and your book should lay more flat. Here's what that book looks like after I did that and you can see it's more flat and here's my final mystic chain stitch book. I also made a second one with some different color thread and patterned paper. So you can really have fun mixing up the different color thread, paper, and tape. The tape does come in different colors and I will link some in the description below. I also like that the cover is flexible so when you're writing or drawing in the book, the pages and cover should lay flat. I really like how these turned out and I like the skulls on them and they can make a great prompt book for October, like Inktober. I also have an October challenge, I'll link that down below. But if you make your own version of these, I would love to see your pictures. So add a hashtag sea lemon and share those with me on my social links. If there's a DIY you'd like to see on this channel, please share it in the comments below. And shout out to my book lemon patrons. Thank you for supporting this channel. And if you'd like to learn how to support this channel as well, I will put my Patreon link down below. Again, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can be the first to get notified for when I post new videos. And you can jump into more book projects in this playlist right here. All of these links will be down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!